Okay, welcome to another Lunar Flight video, and this video is going to just be another 30 minute look at this game. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Actually, let me turn the uh, music volume down a little bit. I turned it up quite a bit because I really like the music in this game. So while I was playing with it off camera, I had the music turned up pretty loud. Um, yeah, I've been playing with this a lot lately because I've just been having a lot of fun with it. <clears throat> so I, I want to do one video with the track IR. I just recorded a um, prepared flight simulator video where I talked a little bit about the track IR. So maybe if you've seen that video, then you kind of already know what my thoughts and opinions are about it. And basically the short of it is that I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And I'm going to be sending it back. But I just thought I would do one video with... Uh, with the uh, track IR on in Lunar Flight, so you could see it here as well. So we've got, I've pretty well got all the missions figured out now. I know how to do transport, I know how to do the survey missions, and I know how to do the uh, cart lost cargo. So let's let's do one that we haven't really shown too much of before, and that's lost cargo. And I'm on the hills map. I think it's called hills. Yeah, it's called hills. So. This one's a little bit high, higher difficulty <clears throat> than the first map. And I do have some upgrades on my on my ship, but I haven't actually done the third level of upgrade. I just got to uh, level three last night, and I was waiting to do a video until I started, until I bought the upgrade, so I'll do that now. So I'll come here to Thrust, and I can now afford uh, level two. At least I've got the experience for it, so I'm going to buy that. That just makes my engines more efficient. It doesn't give me more fuel, but it make, means I burn less fuel <clears throat> per minute or whatever. And we'll buy a level 2 upgrade here. And we'll buy a level 2 upgrade here. And I'm not going to worry about stabilizers and that type of thing. It would probably be helpful, but I kind of want to <clears throat> pilot the vessel as much as I, ha as much as I can manually without relying too much on stabilization autopilots. Okay, so we've got a mission selected uh, here, Lost Cargo. Let's accept that mission. <clears throat> and it says we need to fly to uh, east of Bravo. And Bravo is already selected. Apparently that's where we are right now, so we just need to go east of our current location. Unfortunately, though, the one thing that's a little odd about that is that I don't know where north, south, east, and west is at since this currently shows this view it, it needs to have the indicator when you get away from the landing pad it gives you an indicator that points to where north is at but when you're actually on the landing pad you don't know where north is at and as far as i know there's really no way to know maybe maybe the map i'm still not sure if this points to north or not if it does then it means that we need to go a little bit this way to find the lost cargo so we're currently tilted a little bit southeast so we would need to turn let me think here we would need to turn a little bit to the left in order to be going east i believe okay let me turn track ir on and we can see with track ir you know we can look around i do i do think i like track ir a little bit better in lunar flight than i do in prepared uh, you can look up at the top view there and you can see the um the map and one nice thing about the track IR for Lunar Flight is when you look over here to see your different action items, although apparently my microphone's blocking the sensors, but if you look over here to see the action items, you know, you can, you don't have that problem where you have to hold one button and hold the controller and do weird things. Um, and I've actually found out you don't have to do that. But like, if you just tilt your head here, you get that action item and I can select it by pressing Y. And I've, you know, I've got the controller held naturally in the hand. But I've also found out, let me just point this out too, here at the beginning of the video, let me turn track IR off. If you just right click and look over here, you can see that white dot in the middle, uh, like right there on the crossbar. If you put that dot over top of an item, you can left click the item. Simple as that, I didn't know that before. But I still think it's actually fastest to just toggle the... 2D cockpit on and off in order to power up the uh, power up the vessel. Okay, now let's do this. I uh, got the track IR on, and again we're going to go east of Bravo to locate the cargo. 
and we are fully fueled and we are fully repaired and we've got additional fuel if we need it. So again, east of Bravo should basically be almost forward, but that's a little bit southeast. So east, yeah, straight east should be a little bit to our left. And we currently have no, we're not carrying anything. So at level three, we just need 18% power, I believe. So if I do this thing, which I still don't like, it's one thing I don't like about this game. You have to kind of like press the left trigger down partially, hold it a little bit, then press the select button, then use the right and left triggers to adjust the level. I just, I personally, I think that completely sucks. I think it's stupid, but it is what it is and you have to do it this way. So push the left trigger down a little bit, which is I'm currently just wasting a ton of fuel doing this. And until we're up to about 18%. Now let go and it's going to hold at that level. And I guess this power to power to weight ratio isn't quite right because it says at level oh I guess I'm at level two so I want 22.5 I should be hovering and I'm not maybe it's 24 I guess it's 24 okay so anyway now I'm hovering and I've just wasted a bunch of fuel doing that but let's go to back let's go down to 24 exactly so that we should be at the basically like an equilibrium point buoyant turn a little bit to the left which I believe puts me straight east so I should be facing about straight east right now and since I don't know how far away the cargo is I'm not going to I'm not gonna put in a bunch of forward translate uh, forward pitch I'm just gonna translate over to the east yeah, if I understand this map correctly, I'm heading straight east right now. That's assuming that this is north. So behind me is north. See? No, wait, that's north. So yeah, I should be basically heading east. And we're going to need a bit more power to get up over this hill, so I'm just going to turn off the lock. Power up, that should be good enough. Translate forward a little bit more. <clears throat> And then once this settles back down to a low number, I'll relock the thrust, like right now. And it's possible that the car goes over there, because it's usually like around these rocky things that you see. But it said east, and that's not exactly east, but it could be over there. We'll see. Power up a little bit more, because we have to climb. Yeah, out of the three games that I'm currently playing with simulator-wise, I would say that the track IR works best for this one. But it's not enough for me to want to keep it. Put a little bit more forward translation. See, I don't think we'd have to go this far east for Lost Cargo, so it must be in one of those fields over there. So let's, let's get rid of some hover. And let's uh, yaw around. You know when you're getting close to the cargo because there will be that blue light. Uh, if you look here, you see that blue LED. It'll light up. So I'm going to put in a bit of roll this way to try to eliminate the uh, movement to the to the east. In fact, I can turn off the power uh, lock and put in some more power this way. That'll get me moving faster. Now I can level out. Oops, not quite level. Okay, now translate a bit to the left. See the velocity vector coming around. Translate forward. Because I'm thinking the cargo must be down in this area. How are we doing on fuel? Uh, I must have shut the UI off. Let's yaw around. Power up so we don't descend too much. Okay, that's enough, because I'm thinking the cargo must be 
kind of over here in front of us. Right now I'm just putting in a bunch of left translation to bring the velocity vector around, a bit of forward translation to move forward. Bit of a scavenger hunt for the uh, lost cargo. Powering up so we don't drop into the ground. Now I can relock. Actually, I need to come back to zero first. Now I can relock the uh, thrust. See, now I'm very far northeast. That's assuming, of course, that that's north, which I still don't know if that's the case. Actually, according to this, north's behind me. I'm really confused on this map. I think, though, I don't know if this is north or not. Hmm. All right, let me go back to the landing pad. Refuel. Even though I've got more fuel with me, but I, I don't want to use it. Go back to the landing pad. Then we'll, we'll pick a different direction. Just eliminating the yaw. Okay, translate forward and left. See that velocity vector coming around there. Now forward translation. And get back to the zero position. I don't know if I mentioned it in the video or not, but this, this is the zero position where you see these two horizontal, or I shouldn't say zero position, but this is where you're pitched at, those two horizontal bars. For some reason, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> For some reason I was thinking that that the, the indicator for the pitch position was up here. And I don't really know why I thought that, but. <laughs> okay, we're coming over this hill. Where's my fuel indicator at? I've seemed to have lost track of it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hit the ground if we're not careful. Um, I think I might have turned that information off. That might be why. All right, I have to deal with that later. Coming down the hill. Let me go back to the V cam here. Okay, let's lock the thrust. Bring up the thrust just a little bit. Lift the power ratio. We should be at 24 to be zeroed out. And you gotta watch your pitch too. If your pitch slips off of zero, then that means you're thrusting Slow things down, yaw to the left. Like if your pitch is not exactly at zero position, then you're thrusting a bit forward or you're decelerating. Turn off the throttle lock. Turn on the throttle lock. Put in a bit of roll. Get us rolled back to the zero position. Forward translation. Bring up the power a little bit so we don't slam into the uh, landing pad. Put a bit of roll. And we're almost home. Just a little bit of translation. Reduce power a little bit and we'll settle down on the pad here. Take out some of that pitch. Okay, safe and sound back on the pad, no damage. So let's refuel. And so north must not be there. So let's try going the other way. Let's try going basically forward from where we're at now. All right, power up. And try to set the power, which is impossible. So you can pretty much not even try. Just pick a spot, 
lock it and then spend an hour or two pressing one of the other buttons in order to get it in position. It's the worst thing about this game in my opinion. It's probably the thing that will end up making me stop playing it because the power control is just absolutely stupid and ridiculous. But other than that, it's an A-plus game and I highly recommend it. But the power system is just totally broken. So let's see if the car goes somewhere over here. And we'll pitch forward a little bit. Turn off the lock and just put in some power forward. And I'll pitch back to the zero position and then we'll lock the thrust. Now, north is that way. See, we're going west. So that's definitely not right. All right, let's put on the brakes, eliminate our forward movement. So west or east should be like right here. Let's look at our mission again, east of Bravo. We're at Bravo, or that we have Bravo selected. So east, if that's north, then east is about like right there. All right, so let's pitch forward. Power up. Shut off the throttle lock. And pitch back to zero, make sure we can clear this cliff. Clear this hill, and we will. So finding lost cargo is probably the hardest mission just because you don't know exactly where it's at. You have to hunt for it, and you have to do so within your fuel budget. Oh, the fuel's right there. Okay, so we're almost back to zero on our velocity, so once we do get to about zero, we'll lock. That'll keep us around the hover point. Turn my ceiling fan on, it's a little hot in here. So east of Bravo, yep, should be this way. Maybe even a little bit this way, because we're still... Could be this field, maybe I flew, flew past that one before and missed it. But you get a pretty good warning. It's got like a proximity alarm when you get close. And you can kind of see it when you get reasonably close. There's It, it kind of stands out. It looks like a little pile of rubble, but... See, I'm thinking it can't be past that mountain because I'll be getting to the edge of the map. All right, let's eliminate our forward movement. Oops, wrong way. <laughs> Pitch the wrong way. Okay, that's about all the forward movement gone. And I hate that too when you if you lock the throttle at the wrong point, it it, re, it relocks at a different position. The the throttle lock system in this game is just completely broken. It's so just this is such a great game, and that, that one problem just completely ruins this game. I mean, it doesn't completely ruin it, but it just... 
Seems like such an easy thing to fix, but it's so broken. Alright, let's go around a bit this way. See if we can find this cargo. See if that's north and we're west. No, the base is to the west, so we are off to the east. That's right. Hmm. All right, let me go back to the base and refuel. Maybe we'll get lucky and pass over the cargo on the way back. Putting in a bunch of forward movement just to get over there fast. See that little thing right there that like kind of looks like what the cargo would look like? I wonder if that's it. But that, to me, would be west of Bravo, not east. Bring up the power a bit. And we're going to pitch back and start slowing down here in a moment. Rotate a bit to the left. All right, let's slow down. No, that's not the cargo. That's just a rock. Now that I'm closer, I can tell. Okay, a bit of forward translation, just so we don't take so long to get over there. A bit of left translation to get more in line with the landing pad. Oh, now I know why I wasn't seeing the fuel before, because with the track IR on my head, if my head's tilted down a little bit, then it cuts off the fuel display. All right, back over to this cam. This cam does help a little bit for landing. Take out a little bit of power. See wherever this circle is, that's the velocity vector. Wherever it's pointed, that's where you're going. You can also tell down here that plus sign. That's also the velocity vector. Wherever it's pointed, that's where you're going. So if you can keep that right on top of the landing pad, then that's where you'll go. Just putting in a bit of rotation. I guess it's actually okay where it's at. A little bit of left translation. Actually, I don't want to put in more forward translation. I want to slow down and just bring up the power a bit. I really, really hate the power system. It's so screwed up. <laughs> All right, we're almost back. Got the velocity vector on the landing pad. And now we got the radar indicator down here showing that we're over the pad, but we just have to uh, go forward a little bit more. And then watch our vertical descent. 
Yeah, something like that. Okay, UI on. I guess it was already on. So refuel. Well, we never did find the cargo. Got a couple more minutes left, so let me abort that one. Pick a different mission. Let's just do a transport. Those are typically the easiest. Okay, we need to transport 2,000 cargo to the Delta Quadrant or Delta thing, which was already here, so it's already selected. Let's power up and do our dust to lock the thrust, which is impossible because the thrust lock system is completely broken, but I guess something like that. Okay, now we're in position, so turn off the broken thrust lock, pitch way forward, and put in a lot of power because we've got a long way to go. Notice we are descending a bit, so we want to watch that we don't pitch over too much because we'll just slam into a hillside. And 10 meters a second is enough, so let's go to the zero position. It's not zero. That's zero. Now we should be able to basically glide most of the way there. Kind of reaching apogee here in just a moment. <laughs> Feel a little bit of left translation. Okay, now you have to do a little bit of mental math because there's no way to know what your horizontal rate is. It only shows your vertical rate. So basically, if you press pause, take that number minus that number, and that's your horizontal rate, and then take that number minus that number, and that's how far you are away from the pad. I would argue that you should have that information in addition to the, in addition to the V rate. You should have the H rate. And this information, which is completely worthless, should be replaced by this number minus that number. So that number minus that number is, what would that be, about 570. So we're about 570 meters from the base. That's the information that we need. And we're currently traveling at 9 meters per second because that's that number minus that number. This number is completely useless. Okay, quick pause. Now we are, that number minus that number is 410, so we're 410 meters from the base. And we're traveling at that number minus that number, which is about 7.8 meters per second. So unpause. Okay, I think we can start braking now. So pitch way back. Just not to overdo it, because then you will drop into the ground. And back to the zero position, all the meanwhile, putting a little bit of thrust so you don't drop. Okay, now if you pause, we are that number minus that number, which is about 190 from the base. And we're moving at about 3.25 meters per second, because that's almost zero. Try to turn on the broken thrust lock, but I just have to turn it off. Try again. That's not right. Try again. That's definitely not right. Try again. That's not right. Try again. That's not right. Try again. That's a little bit better. Okay. 
And once we land, we'll call it a park because we are at 30 minutes. If you like this part of the video, please do hit the like button down below. If you didn't like it, hit the don't like button and leave a comment. Let me know what I can do better. And if you like this game, want to check it out, go to Steam or check the link in the description down below. You can go to the developer's website and buy it directly. Uh, despite my annoyances with the thrust lock system, I do like this game. I do recommend it. It's worth buying. It's only like nine bucks or something, so you can't go wrong. It's a lot of fun. Um, and maybe you won't have any problems with the thrust lock like I do. I just, I just think it's really retarded the way it works. <laughs> We're almost here at the base. And we'll touch down on the pad, and with the Xbox controller, you press the up button on the D-pad, up to upload and D to download. Okay, we're here, so just settle down slip gradually on the pad. And there we go, nice soft touchdown. So yeah, once you have your cargo, press the down arrow, or actually the up arrow, and that uploads the cargo that you do have to the pad. When you go to when you go to a transport location and you find cargo, you press the down button on the D-pad to download it to your vessel. Let me turn off the uh, track IR now. Close that out, and we are all set. We'll refuel for our next mission. And there's no repair to do because we actually landed pretty well. So if you compare this video to like the first couple videos, you can see I'm flying a lot better. Uh, part, partly for experience, partly the Xbox controller helps. Because if you try to control the thrust with the keyboard, it's pretty much impossible. It's pretty much impossible to control the thrust with the Xbox controller, but it's less impossible than it is to, than it is to control it with the keyboard. So the Xbox controller is slightly less broken than the keyboard. The keyboard, consider that 100% broken, and consider the Xbox controller like 90% broken. If you have something like a SciTech controller with the throttle quadrant, that actually works really well for controlling the thrust. But, the, but then you don't have the Xbox, the Xbox controller in your hand, so that's a bit of a problem. Um, so there's... The, the control system, in my opinion, could use, a, could use some work, but... We'll see what we do as we gain more experience with this game. Uh, that's it, and I will see you in the next video.